A lot to talk about with the NFL draft. It is lion season. It is tear down a particular prospect season as well. It seems like there's always a prospect or two every draft cycle that when we get <laughs> close to the draft, rumblings come out about the guy's personality, the guy's coachability. You see this each and every year. You know, it's funny. We're about to talk about C.J. Stroud. I remember a couple of years ago, it was a different Ohio State quarterback we were questioning. It was Justin Fields. Remember, there was talk about how he couldn't really read defenses and he wasn't sophisticated enough to play quarterback at the NFL level. That was a legit thing that came out a couple of years ago. Now you remember the conversation around Dwayne Haskins? Similar things as well. I'm sensing an Ohio State quarterback trend here. Mm. The, the The football nerds and the scheme nerds will tell you that there's something to that from an Ohio State perspective because you face three to four really tough defenses a year, and then – Beyond that, they try to make it easy for you. You run the score up, and you put the backup in in the third quarter, and you get ready for the trip to Iowa, or you get ready for Penn State coming to town, or you get ready to take on Michigan. Like there, There's something to it, especially because you have so much evidence, but each guy needs to be judged individually within that whole Ohio State quarterback situation. No love for Rutgers. Yeah, it's, don't think they worry too much about old Rutgers showing up on the schedule. Well, former NFL GM and current NFL analyst Michael Lombardi on his podcast earlier talks about what he's heard about C.J. Stroud and also references the fact that a lot of people just assume that, oh, well, if Bryce Young goes one, then the Texans would take Stroud at number two. C.J. Stroud's an interesting guy. When you talk to people in the league, they'll tell you C.J. Stroud is not this is not a knock. This is just a conversation. Not an easy guy to coach. The word that people use is he's very not believing in what you're saying. And so he's a little bit challenging to coach. So it's not like he comes in and embraces it. It's a little bit, he's got a little bit different style to is him. Is that where it's like he thinks he knows better? He type thinks of he knows situation? a little bit better. Okay. He's, he's probably hard to take to coach it. I'm not saying he's not a good player. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying the vibe that you get from talking to people that have interviewed him is. He's not an easy guy to coach. And so what I've done is I've asked people, I said, you know, I've heard C.J. Stroud's not an easy guy to coach. Yeah, and everybody echoes that back to you. So I'm not saying he's not a good player. I like C.J. Stroud. Would I pick him at two? I don't know. But I think if you have to understand, where are they? The one thing we do know about Houston is there is no information coming out of there. There's right. not confirmation of Stroud. There's not any confirmation of anything. What do we make of those comments from Lombardi? The first thing that kind of jumps out to me is what he's saying to me sounds like a knock, but he's trying to say that what he's saying there is not a knock of the guy. I don't know how that makes sense exactly. This is a very unique approach to a conversation that is important to have about quarterbacks. How well do they take coaching and what type of coaching do they want? Do you want the type of coaching where they are hands-off and they let you figure out the problems and then you show up and you say, did I get this right? Did I get this wrong? And then you kind of confirm what they figure out, which is kind of what you hear about from the Bryce Young standpoint, where it's like Bryce Young had cut-ups on Sundays for O'Brien of the games they played on Saturdays at Alabama. Like That's a guy that does his own work on his own on his self and then <clears throat> figures out if everybody saw it the same way he saw it. Like that's an important element to know how a guy gets coached and what he responds to. I'll tell you this much. You think Ryan Day had any issues with C.J. Stroud? No. Like, it doesn't seem like he did. Maybe maybe there's a conversation to be had about hey, they couldn't get him to run. But in the biggest game of the season, C.J. Stroud figured out a way to use his legs to try to win the damn football game. Like, so uh, e even then, like uh, yeah, they really wanted him to run more. Oh, well, see, he was supposed to put his body in danger instead of hit that wide open receiver across the field. And, and he's supposed to not throw it to Marvin Harrison Jr. in a 50 50 ball. He's supposed to uh, not dump it off to some running back who's going to be a second, third round pick in a couple of years. Like, he's supposed to not just sit back with two offensive tackles who are going to be NFL players from day one and just sit back and try to find the open guy. Like, this is a weird thing to say about CJ Stroud. That sure felt like a knock. I agree with you, Jake. I mean, it would have been one thing if he said, no, this isn't a knock on C.J. Stroud, but sometimes he was tough for coaches because he tried to coach. 
he would cut them off in the middle of film sessions and say, no, nah, I think we should do this and do that. Like that or he would be, was too prepared right. for like whatever the coaches were coming at, coming at him with that. He would actually know more than the coaches. Exactly. But that's not what was said. He just knocked him for a minute after saying this is not a knock. Though one guy that I can always remember this being one of the biggest issues with, and unfortunately for him, a lot of it was captured on tape, is this was a Josh Rosen knock back in the day. And Trent Dilfer talked about it at length while Rosen was getting drafted, after Rosen got drafted, and you saw it unfold because it was an ESPN special on the Elite 11 camp. And Trent Dilfer didn't like the way Rosen took coaching because instead of listening to the coaches, Rosen would go to the whiteboard and be like, well, this is wrong. We need to do this. We need to draw this up. And it's like he knew the stuff. He just wouldn't listen to the coach. Yeah. And like, this is another thing you got to understand about the NFL. These guys want you to run the plays that they call. Like, when the guy's on the headset, he's got the Denny's menu. He's telling you Spider 2 Y Banana. You're supposed to run Spider 2 Y Banana. He's the coach. He's the coach. And so I just remember back to Rosen, and it's like everybody would tell you the guy's a high level guy. It just, he maybe wanted to do his own thing a couple of different times. So I wonder if maybe there's a little bit of that. Like, Stroud knew better and did better, and it looked good on Saturdays. But then the coach would go in and be like, hey, that's not what we're supposed to do. So there's been rumblings that the Texans love Bryce and that after that, maybe they don't view C.J. Stroud as the guy they want second overall. I wonder if this would deter Nick Casario, D'Amico Ryans from picking him. And I also want to bring up a report from Albert Breer earlier this week where he even wrote that he gets the sense the Texans want Bryce Young and if he's there, that's their pick. But at two, he used the word murky to describe what they would do. So I wonder if this info on Stroud, if it's true, if the Texans, I mean, they met with him in person. They brought him in there, in here for a one-on-one -on -one visit, top 30 visit. I wonder if they feel the same way Lombardi apparently has put out there that he's heard about Stroud. Would that deter the Texans from taking him? Look, D'Amico has talked a lot about character, and he's talked a lot about finding the right person, not just the right football player for every position on the team, but specifically the quarterback position. So they're going to investigate this. They already have. Uh, they've had a ton of conversations with Ohio State people, with high school coaches, with people who know or played with or played against C.J. Stroud. They've done their research on this already, but they're probably going to do a little bit more. Uh, I, I would love some evidence or an instance or a story from Mike Lombardi here uh, of this happening. Like, Did he flat out tell Ryan Day he wasn't going to do something? One time, did he sleep through a team meeting or a film session at one point because he disagreed with what the coaches were saying? Like, that's such a vague blanket statement coming from Mike Lombardi that I just, I don't know if I have any reason to believe it, you know? And once again, the Texans are doing their due diligence. They probably already have. They definitely should. I will say this, if they're right, it, it could be a worry because of Bobby Slowick. Could it not? I and mean, this guy's never been an offensive coordinator before. He's never been a quarterback coach before. Could C.J. Stroud, if he is hard to coach, could he come in here and be like, why would I listen to you? You never played the position. You've never been offensive coordinator before. My college coach has a way longer resume than you do, and he told me to do this. Why would I listen to you and do this? Like, If that is a legitimate concern, and I don't think it is because we don't have anybody else corroborating this or any evidence saying that it's true, but if that is a legitimate concern, yeah, I wonder if that could be a deal breaker for the Texans. Well, you got a guy in the building that has at least some level of experience in dealing with C.J. Stroud and coaching with him. It's Gerard Johnson, the quarterback's coach, used to help run Elite 11 camps that C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young, for the record, were at. And so you find out a lot about those guys because those guys at the Elite 11 camps, especially the big-time ones with the big-time prospects, you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with NFL guys, former NFL guys, future NFL guys. And so you've got at least a, some sort of working knowledge in the building of how C.J. Stroud takes coaching, so you'd be able to determine if this is or isn't an issue, or at least have a starting point to determining if this is or isn't an issue. The other thing worth repeating, C.J. Stroud, very close with Deshaun Watson. C.J. Stroud, represented by David Mulligan, Deshaun's agent. Now, we talked about this before. I don't know how big of a deal that maybe is to Nick Casario or D'Amico Ryans, but how does Cal McNair feel about that? That's another question with the C.J. Stroud conversation to the Houston Texans. Thank you so much for your help in making The Wheelhouse the most viewed Houston sports show on YouTube. If you like our show, then please subscribe to my channel for more daily clips from the show. And, of course, tune in each and every day to The Wheelhouse on ESPN 97.5 FM 
or 92.5 FM from 3 to 7 every afternoon.